first thing I did was touch him. And he touched me. And we shared a mutual feeling. The virtue left him and came into me. And he energized my spiritual man. And my spiritual man spoke to my mind and my mind imparted it to my body. And here I am. Amen. Put a praise on my lips and clap it in my hand. And you know what? My praise is not determined by others. It's not determined by a praise leader. It's not determined by musicians. Praise the Lord. He gave me my praise. And I can praise him in a desolate place. I can praise him in imprisonment. I can praise him in intensive care. I can praise him anywhere. And all that men would praise the Lord. And so I have nothing but praise for my Savior. Praise the Lord. I said to my Savior last night, if I don't see you no more on earth. <laughs> Glory to God. I'll see you in the other place. I'll see you in glory. But you've gone to prepare a place for our disembodiment. So that to be absent from the body is to be in the presence of God. This is tight time. This is close time. This is real time. Praise the Lord. And we can't have it because the Bible said that the church composed of honorable and dishonorable vessels. But the honorable vessels must not become dishonorable. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You must maintain your honor. What, what is it honorable to be? It's honorable to be a Christian. What is, what is greater than being a Christian? To be a Christian character. To act like a Christian and to talk like a Christian. You can do a Christian's job for a while and not be a Christian. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it is a wonderful thing to be a Christian. Yeah. To want to uh, administer love and forgiveness and humility during adversity and adversity and during the times that you are attacked. Amen. To say, I'm a child of God. That's my anchor. My consciousness of who I am, praise the Lord, anchors me. My soul is anchored, praise the Lord. Therefore, my conversations are censored. You don't find me talking any kind of way on the telephone. People call me and try to lure me into that by saying, she said this and that and that. Like I'm supposed to be questioned by what he or she said. Thank you, Jesus. I don't fall into snares and traps like that. You know, I show you the picture of a seven-year-old child that just got spanked. And the eight-year-old child comes in from outdoors and looks at the seven-year-old child and says, what happened? And the seven-year-old child says, mom, spank me. And the eight-year-old child takes it upon itself to go to the mother to question the spanking. Then after a while, you hear another spanking. So if you're not careful, it's going to be another spanking. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. You're not a parent. You don't know the parent's disposition. You can't be a brother or a sister and know what children put a parent through. Praise the Lord. It takes years. You know what? I paid a price to sit here. I didn't just walk from my doors up here. I paid a price to sit here. But I paid such a price, I can get up. Get up with me. So, heck, you don't know that sitting. I don't care. 
That doesn't make you me. That doesn't make somebody you. Nobody can sit in your seat. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And if you follow the pattern that God's drawn out for you, you are unique. You are different. Now, you ain't got to be jealous. Come on. You don't have to compete with anybody. Because it ain't nobody else in the world like you. Give God some praise out there. When God removed my son from the planet Earth, I asked him, why you do that? I was defiant. I was angry. Anger can get you killed. When you're angry, you forget you're not strong. When you're angry, you don't think you can be whipped. You run up on somebody that'll turn you every way but loose. And if you were not angry, you never would have done that. That's why the Bible said be angry, but don't do nothing. Don't commit. <laughs> come on, come on, stay with it. Don't commit. Hallelujah. And there were things that happened. And I, I was just very upset and very angry. And I said things about God. I said, God took my boy. And the way I said it, it pushed people in another mode. I was not being kind to God. I was being very unjust. He took my boy. You know? And God knew a dummy was talking. God knew I needed mercy and not judgment. I needed understanding and not con uh, uh, to be condemned. And I sit in the seat and in the stead of God. I, and sometimes I run across people, they don't know what they're talking about. You know? And sometimes it's best just to give people quiet. Just don't answer what they're saying. Because the answer is not going to be the answer anyway. Yeah. Say amen to that. Amen. And so God knew that I was lacking something and I needed mercy. Yeah. You know what God knew I needed? God knew I needed God. Amen. Yes. I didn't yes. need man. I didn't need somebody else coming, being sympathetic with me on the same level I was. Nobody can take the place of God. Because even when you are offensive, he understands. Huh? His demeanor, his position, his spirit is God. And during that time of defiance and anger, he loved me. Amen. He loved me. Yes, he does. He knew I was out of my mind. He knew that I was ignorant. Mm -hmm. He knew that I didn't know that he made David. That David was here as long before he was mine. That he sent David here. I didn't bring David here. That all life comes from God. And that David was here to serve his purpose irregardless of what I thought about. Hallelujah. And I went to him. I, and and I, I, I left the phrase, he took my boy to you kill my boy. Full of anger. I was praying and all of a sudden I'm possessed with anger. And I go from a mellow spirit to an angry spirit. You kill my boy. Why did you kill my boy? And I have been in his face several times with this. And finally he answered me. He said, what you need to ask me is why I haven't killed you. Glory to God. <laughs> because I'm God and you are you. The audacity. Where do you get off? Mm. <clears throat> and you got to realize that God has set in the church authorities below him. Where do you get off? You can't say that's my pastor or my bishop and at the same time question my authority. 
You can pray for me. You don't have to agree with me. But you can't attack me. Because all you got to do is put yourself in a parent's place. You can tell some people have never been a parent. Because what gives you a head start on being a pastor is to have some children of your own. <laughs> and just say, well, that's my little sheep. And you can't even keep your own children in line. Amen. Huh? Sometimes, some come home, make sure that they're by 8 o'clock, and the others are not there. Amen. Amen. So, we've been disobedient, and when we received or uh, became parents ourselves, our kids did the same thing to us that we did to our parents. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And so we go through these things. And Paul said, but when I became a man, I laid aside all these childish things. This is the day that we've gathered together to say thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for putting up with me. Thank you for understanding me. And I thought I was doing something right. And I was wrong. But you didn't cut me off. Thank you, God. Thank you for showing me mercy. Thank you. Treating me just like I've done the right thing. Treating me good. Thank you, Lord. And so on this particular day, we've set it aside to come and give God praise and thanksgiving. You know, I want to say this, and then I'm going to relieve my audience. I, I just wanted to bless Facebook for a moment and let them go. Because some of the things that you'll be testifying and maybe saying is not Facebook. Amen. Worthy. Yeah. Praise the Lord. But the one thing that I love about Jesus is that he helped me where I needed it. Yes, I was a liar. I was a trespasser. You know, you name it. But that's not where I needed him most. He went to the core. He went to the most important place where I needed him most. And somebody asked him, said, Lord, who are you? And he revealed it. But they couldn't catch it. He said, I'm the resurrection. Amen. I'm the resurrection. They couldn't catch it because they didn't know they were dead in trespasses and in sin. That they had been sentenced to eternal absence from God. And he came to fix that. He didn't stop until he went to the core of the problem. He conquered our enemy. We were dead in trespasses and in sin. He, not, he didn't just deal with the death or the sin. He dealt with the death. He said, I'm not just a lamb that take away your sins. I am the resurrection that deals with your death. Because you are dead. Your sins have deadened you to me. You are separated from me. So I come that you might have life, huh? To raise you from your eternal deadness and give you eternal life. And on this day, we come together to say thank you, Jesus. To say hallelujah when you figure, you vitality, and you spirit. And to sing unto the Lord our new song. To sing unto the Lord our praise and our worship. Not something tainted, not something spoiled, but because he's new and fresh all the time, I have something different to say because he has made a difference in me. And I want you to worship God as I pray for those who are viewing 
by way of Titus Cook and Street. Oh, Father of the world without end, look on these, my invisible audience, around the world, Lord, and let your mighty power come on them and let them feel your deliverance. Let them feel the hand that Mary and Martha felt. And let them sense the spirit of forgiveness that Peter felt. Oh God, great exhibit of mercy and love and compassion. We invite you into this place and into our listening and viewing audience around the world. Bless him now. Bless the woman who's desperate for your hand. Desperate for a word. Bless that man that's been waiting on you for a sense of direction. Something to help him out with his family, to take care of his children. In the name of Jesus, help that public official who needs you to govern and to officiate. I ask for all of these blessings in the name of Jesus. And God bless you. I'll see you next time. Hallelujah. Let's praise God. Come on, let's praise God.